Okay, so this last week was uh, pretty crazy, pretty interesting. I uh, had a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I'll give you a little rundown of the three kind of sides of my life that I talk about. We're going to start with uh, what I did last week as a professional triathlete. And uh, I was kind of torn. Uh, there was a PTO race down in Florida. Um, and it was like, I don't know, should I hop on an airplane and fly down there and do this race? And, uh, you know, I was seventh at Huntington and I was like, yeah, I could go down there and I think I could have a similar finish, make some money, um, compete as a professional triathlete again. Um, but it made me a little nervous about hopping on a plane. Made it. Made it. I think I could have been pretty safe. Florida's obviously a little bit of a hot spot right now. But I ultimately just said it's a lot of time commitment to go down there for relatively small amount of money. I've been saving all month for this. The risk of not making anything, whereas driving to Huntington was a, a little bigger uh, payoff opportunity. And so I made the decision not to go to the PTO race in, uh, in Florida. Looking at the results, I think, you know, I knew what kind of fitness I was in and I probably would have had a decent result, but um, it was an okay decision. So anyway, Friday night, uh, I'm sitting at home. One of my good friends, Dr. Steve Feltz, sends me a text, asked me about doing a 5K race at a bison ranch in Van Meter, Iowa. Uh, I'm like, Oof, 5K, I don't know. Um, I mean, obviously I wasn't like training specifically for or doing it, but I said, all right, why not? Let's go out there. So there were 60 people that did a 5K in Van Meter, Iowa on uh, Saturday morning. And uh, I was out there, didn't really know what to expect. Really cool place. It's called Bear Bison. And uh, yes, we ran right along a whole bunch of bison fences. Actually had some deer that ran through the, through the forest in front of me, but it was also really cool. They actually have white bison. It was super hilly, super muddy. I had to run really slow at a bunch of times. Uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit about it, but I ran 20 minutes and 26 seconds for 5K, which is definitely the slowest 5K I've done in any open 5K race in a long time. It wasn't the most competitive race by any means, but it was fun, it was a race, it was a memorable experience. After the race, they were actually cooking bison burgers, um, but it was just a cool grassroots type event, really small, again, 60 people, but that was my big competition as a athlete for the week. Um, so it's kind of a fun way to do that. Uh, on the family front, Boy, Sunday, that was day full of just soccer, and it was my last uh, day of soccer, but it was just soccer, soccer, soccer. So Drew started out with a with a game at uh, at two o'clock, and it was a pretty bad game. They actually got smoked pretty bad. Go, Bev, go! Defense, come on, defense! Not this way. That way. Nice job. To Romy. Go, Romy, go. Um, played a little better in the second half than the first half, but uh, I was proud of the kids. You know, it was really cold. It was 35 degrees, somewhat windy, um, kind of tough playing conditions. And I coach a team, there's eight kids on Drew's team, two boys, six girls, uh, so mostly girls' team. And uh, they've made huge improvements this year. It's always fun to see what they do. Second game was Theo's game. They were short one player. Take your time. Good game. Nice job, buddy. And uh, Theo, he's, he's a little more of a loose cannon out there. He's a very good soccer player, but uh, he's a challenge for me to coach. He's kind of mouthy. Uh, <laughs> Theo, spread out! All the way out, be all the way out! 
You're playing defense, Theo. Theo, you're playing defense. All right, Owen, go play defense. Extremely disrespectful at times and needed to be disciplined. Uh, his team won by quite a bit. They were a lot better than the other team, but I get more concerned about, you know, my son's behavior and uh, sometimes it puts me in an awkward position. I'm pretty intense when I coach. Go, 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 go! Delaney, it's our ball! Corner kick! But uh, I try to be very positive with the kids all the time when I am um, giving feedback and not. So it's, it's hard for me when, when my son's the worst behaved on the team. Uh, and then we move into the program I, I'm in charge of, the kickstart. Uh, the most fun that I have on the soccer field every Sunday is with them. So I'm a board member for the Des Moines Soccer Club and that's my role is to be the director of the kickstart program. Alright? Alright? Alright guys, hey! Find a, find a cone over there, find a cone. Run to the yellow, run to the yellow. Go, 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 go. Uh, it's, you know, introducing soccer to absolutely the youngest kids. And I would say for a, a girl who's just a month into being four years of age, Frankie's a really good soccer player. She's had the advantage of seeing her old, older siblings play. Um, she's got great ball position and skills. She's very competitive, a little bit sassy. Yeah, what does the fox say? <laughs> Don't start that, all right. Uh, but it's fun. We, we play games. We play a game called Kick the Giant. They just have fun. We waddle. We're, we're, we're the pink team because Frankie wanted to be the pink team and I got to choose. And so our team name were the Pink Penguins. And uh, so we go out in the middle of the field and we all waddle together. And that's a, that's a fun part of playing soccer. And so that's kind of uh, the end of the season. Soccer is all done uh, for the outdoor season right now. And um, that's kind of my coaching involvement with it. And I love every bit of it. It really is one of life's free gifts to coach your child in the sport of soccer and so uh, it's a lot of work to coach all three of them but it, I wouldn't trade it for anything it's a huge part of me and what I do so the last side of this is what's going on at work uh, got some cool stuff coming out uh, we actually are shipping the first mogul to Japan so there will be a mogul headed to Japan very shortly um, we've also got a bunch of parts that are finally coming in and the supply chain continues to be bogged down and even domestic suppliers are bogged down so we're waiting for a lot of this stuff to arrive it just keeps coming and coming and coming there's never a let up it's relentless all those moguls are going out that's really cool i love seeing those those are awesome bikes and since we're building all those here in iowa and putting them out each one is made by our chief operating officer electrical engineer eric greenley a lot, of, a lot of quality time going into those um, and they're coming out looking pristine so uh, very happy about that and the other cool thing is a lot of these moguls uh, are getting custom built wheels too so we're building some of these wheels with uh, Chris King ceramics, uh, Christine Harding's getting some uh, matte turquoise Chris King ceramic hubs. Ian Hersey out of Hawaii is getting a mogul that's going to be really cool, putting a little honu on the side of it. Uh, so, and most importantly, Ironman Arizona 70.3 happened. So there's really good emphasis that Ironman Florida is going to happen here in a couple weeks, and Ironman Arizona is going to happen uh, a few weeks after that. So we're back to racing. So again there becomes a need to have a diamond bike if you're racing uh, in a triathlon. And that should also be noted that uh, the overall amateur champion at the very first race in the United States, sanctioned by Ironman, Arizona 70.3 in Tempe, was won overall by Jan Stepinski with the fastest bike split by a considerable margin on a diamond. Uh, Jan Stepinski's fabulous athlete, um, a lot of fast riders on diamonds and they're going to finally get an opportunity to race.
So anyway, thanks for checking in. That's what's happening this week. See you soon. Go, go, go. I feel like I need to put this uh, cell phone back on there.